And now in this video, we're going to look at a portable power supply that I just got. So it's TP3016M, uh, made by uh, Tech Power up there. But in uh, any case, as you can see, it's got a couple plugs there, positive and negative, up to 30 volts. And then at 30 volts, 1.6 amps. At lower voltages, you can get more current. We'll look at that coming up. There's also the uh, USB port there. Fortunately, if I press that button, it will change the settings to a USB and then hold them there even after I turn it off. So I'm not going to do that right now. We'll uh, hopefully come to that later. In any case, I'm really happy with this. There's uh, just uh, a couple things I would change if, uh, if I could. But uh, for the most part, I'm completely happy with it. So if you hear me make any complaints, they are really, really minor. So in any case, it's set to uh, a maximum of 0.5 amps and 10 volts. And I'm going to unplug it. All you need is uh, this plug. It, it comes with it, but uh, that's it. It's not like a voltage converter or anything. You just give it direct uh, AC power right there. And then the other end plugs right into the unit. So there's nothing in between these two. It's a switch mode power supply. So it converts the uh, voltage as needed from uh, the AC outlet. So one thing I kind of don't like is it's a little hard to feel when you give it a proper plug-in, but it will turn on. The power button only sets the uh, output right there, the uh, probes. So I'm going to press the button, it flipped to on right there. The button is red though, so you can tell it's on. Now you can see it's outputting 10 volts because we have no load. So right there. So let's, uh, there's a couple USB ports there. Other than that, we can see everything down there. No point staying a mile away back like that. Now we might as well move in. Let's set the meter. And so of course, measuring voltage to make sure the voltage is accurate is uh, pretty straightforward. I have the meter set to measure voltage there. And we have the uh, probe there. So also, this is probably an average size meter for the most part. I also have my larger meter there, which looks like it's even bigger than uh, this power supply there. So it's not terribly large. So this is maybe a medium sized meter or something. And uh, so it's not terribly large, but it's not, you know, pocket sized or anything. But in any case, we're going to measure the uh, voltage and see how accurate that is. So right now it's not outputting anything. and. Uh, Okay, it's off right now. This is one thing I got to mention. When this is off, so that's the off button. Then uh, if you unplug it, you'll you'll get no voltage, of course, at uh, some point, anyways. But with the button off, there's no voltage. You turn it on, you get the voltage. So I should have said there's a negative voltage. So that is a problem. I read this in the comment section, but uh, it was still worth buying the uh, unit. So if you have integrated circuits or something that may be damaged by negative voltage, put some uh, protection. And so I did a video recently on using a MOSFET to prevent negative voltage from reaching your uh, circuits. But in any case, it's probably not a big deal in the vast majority of cases. So there we go. We have the voltage there. It's lining up uh, pretty nicely right there. Now with current, that is where I'm a little disappointed, so not terribly disappointed. I'm going to turn the uh, meter off and actually let's try just measuring the current through the uh, meter to begin with. And so I didn't know for sure when I got this if it actually limited current, like it said. So I set it to amps. I had no reason to doubt it. and. I actually just took the probes and put them right in where these banana plugs are. But since I already have everything set up, we will just measure directly here. And this is actually the first time I measured it this way. But now you can see there's no uh, voltage right there. The unit shut off. So it has short circuit protection. It prevents uh, a short circuit by cutting the power if you have a short circuit. So you may really, really like that. I still wanted it to output half an amp of current. So we're going to turn the uh, power on. And we don't want to leave the meter measuring current. Luckily it's in amps, especially when it's in milliamps. You'd have to have the plug over here. 
but uh, we're going to do that while we turn it off. But uh, especially in the milliamps or microamps, it's easy to blow the fuse if you accidentally measure a power supply voltage and uh, instead of uh, current. So in any case, we turned it off. That keeps it safe. It's a lot safer to measure uh, voltage and leave it in the voltage setting if you accidentally measure something when you want something else. So what we're going to do, the uh, power is back on. You can see 10 volts and you see constant voltage. That's because it is low resistance. So first I tested the uh, 10 ohm resistor here. It's a 10 watt resistor. And I'm going to plug that in here. These resistors get hot and so I don't want to touch the uh, resistor at all if I can help it. And we are going to connect this side. Well, we can still get a view. And it takes a little while to warm up, so I don't have to jump out of the way. But there you can see, it's only outputting 5 volts now. And that's because 10 volts divided by 10 ohms is 1 amp. But uh, we have it set to half an amp. And if I hit that button there, now you can see it's given us the current output right there of 0.5 amps, 500 milliamps or so. So this can get quite warm. That is about half of the wattage that this is rated for. And usually you want to keep resistors about half of their rated uh, wattage. They still get really hot though. But in uh, any case, there you can see, it's looking pretty good. And so with 10 ohms of resistance, I don't want to touch that right now, no, no problem. Let's try uh, 5 ohms of resistance right there. So again, it's a 10 watt resistor. Now we're going to put 10 watts uh, through this. So it's even more important that I don't touch it. This wire down here probably won't get too hot. And uh, there we go. But uh, I took it out. There you can see. So it's holding current with 5 ohms of resistance. No problem. So I don't know how little resistance it needs. But as you can see, when we get to nothing, it's short circuit protections. And uh, so that's okay. It's just I would rather be able to measure the current through a meter, but meters don't have any resistance when you're measuring current. And so I can't verify that number, but I'm sure it is uh, accurate. So now we're going to look at programming this. So you can see we've got two USB ports there. I unplugged it. You can see 30 volts and 1.6 amps. So that 1.6 amps is at 30 volts. If you lower the voltage, then the uh, current is not as limited. And I didn't have this plugged in all the way. There we go. And uh, feels uh, feels kind of loose for some reason. Okay, let's go back here. So this has a warning. It gets hot back there. I just touched it. And maybe I got to flip okay now it feels like it's in pretty snug so again it doesn't really have that feel that you got a snug uh, fit in there but uh, we we are snug now so in any case again that's one thing I kinda don't like about it it's still well worth the money though in my opinion and again it's taken AC voltage from the outlet and so it needs to convert that uh, energy to DC step down the voltage and stuff there's going to be components that get hot so that's not a surprise and it may be a good idea to set this on some metal to uh, radiate the heat or something uh, but in any case don't touch it let it cool down for a while it has that warning there so what we're going to do we're going to hit this button for the uh, USB right there and now you can see it's set to 5.1 volts so USB is 5 volts and we got 2.5 amps of current right there. So that is a pre-setting. When I hit the button now, now it is just the settings that it is set to. And so we have to uh, change them if we don't want this voltage and maximum current. So to begin with, we have this uh, set button there. Also, just uh, playing around, I think, there. I thought that changed the display. There we go. You can see the display changed right there. So just hitting these buttons does a few things. I don't know why it took a little while to go. So I don't know what all options it has, but I have seen before. Yeah, that makes it dimmer and uh, darker right there. And I think just the light there. And that looks like that's all we got at that point. So now we go here. We have the uh, voltage. We can hit this button and change it to current. It's only 5 volts. So I think 
we will get to 3.75. There we go. So yeah, even if I keep going up, it's 3.75. Now, that is at 5 volts because it has a certain amount of power that it can output. So we're going to go to the uh, voltage and it can go up to 30 volts. So let's do 15 and you can see it's going to output less current because you got more voltage. So uh, power is voltage times current. Voltage in volts times current in amps. So you can take the uh, voltage and the amps that are being delivered to a particular load. Remember the more resistance it has the less current will be going through it so less amps. But you take the voltage applied and the current going through it you'll get power. And uh, so we saw with the resistors there we had 10 watts and so we could take 10 volts in one amp for the uh, 10 ohm uh, resistor or we could uh, put uh, 5 volts and uh, 2 amps through it uh, or whatnot. So in any case it's the wattage rating. Now we're gonna go up again 25 volts. You can see it went down even more and it limits itself at 30 volts right there and we got 1.666 and so now we can uh, also go all the way to the end there. I'm going to hit it down one and you see it goes to 98. So even it doesn't just go to zero and then back to nine. It actually lowers it like that. If you want, uh, if you're just like a couple spots away, you might just do that instead of jumping over. But in uh, any case, let's go to uh, zero and really that's that's about it we can again limit the current by hitting that and lowering it right there and if you don't like that number you can just uh, make it back to 0.5 so that's right I forgot I can't go up like that so it's not uh, hard at all it just takes a little bit getting used to but it's really easy to program so now at uh, 30 volts of power we will only provide half an amp of uh, current maximum right there and we're gonna need probably at least one ohm of resistance I don't have a real high wattage one ohm resistor there so I'm not gonna test it out but unfortunately as I said before you can't short circuit it which uh, is no big deal usually you don't want to short circuit power supplies so not end of the world but in any case I'm really happy with this you're gonna see it in a lot of videos because I have a bench power supply a you know relatively cheap bench power supply I'm perfectly happy with it but it's extremely hard to film it and circuits that I'm working on at the same time and uh, super capacitors and stuff they they're uh, really good for bench power supplies but it's hard to get it all in the same uh, scene so that's why I was mostly eager to get this but if you don't have a bench power supply at all to begin with this is only a hundred and five dollars before taxes on Amazon so it's not terribly expensive goes up to 30 volts my bench power supply only goes up to uh, 18 volts and then no matter the voltage my bench power supply only goes to 3 amps whereas this gets to almost 4 amps so all in all I like this one uh, better you know uh, for everything involved so in any case hopefully you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching I will see you in the next video